Ah uh, yes, Link 21. The plan to connect the Bay Area and the Central Valley mega region with rail. Arguably the most important part, aside from California High Speed Rail, is the second Trans Bay Rail Crossing. On this channel, we've already talked about a second rail tunnel underneath the bay from San Francisco to Oakland. And while this rail crossing is extremely important and has been making considerable progress towards actually happening, its partner on the southern section of the bay hasn't been faring so well. So my question is, what is the future for this crossing? Please exit to the rear door. Doors open. Welcome to part 3 of the Dumbarton Bridge series, the final part. In the last parts, we talked about the rise and the demise of the Dumbarton Rail Crossing. But what about its future? Let's start off by taking a look at the stations. The Dumbarton Rail Corridor has five stations, if we include Redwood City and Union City, the Termini. The stations consist of Redwood City, Menlo Park, Newark, Fremont, and Union City. Let's start off with Redwood City. Redwood City serves all Caltrain services, which means local, limited service, and baby bullet services stop here. Right now, Redwood City is a little two-track, two-side platform station. When the Dumbarton Rail Quarter becomes a thing, yeah, this setup isn't gonna work out. Luckily, Caltrain has a plan to quad-track the station. This is because in the future, Caltrain has a plan to run a minimum of 8 trains an hour on the Peninsula Corridor. On top of that, California High Speed Rail, which will also be using the Peninsula Corridor, will be running a minimum of 4 trains an hour. That's 12 trains an hour. Again, this is all just on the Peninsula Corridor. This doesn't even include the Dumbarton Rail services. It's safe to say that this section of the corridor will be the busiest. With that being said, Caltrain has also made plans to grade separate this part of the corridor. They study grade separations at Broadway, Maple, Main, and Chestnut Street. This means that trains will impede less on auto and pedestrian traffic. But it should be noted that these are plans for 2040, which as I mentioned in my California High Speed Rail video, is kind of late. Furthermore, I'm gonna be so real with you guys, I don't see how this section of the peninsula corridor is going to be quad tracked. In order to quad track, there needs to be around 70 feet of right of way. From Control Point to Martin, the section where the Dumbarton Corridor meets the Peninsula Corridor, and Redwood City, there's less than 65 feet of right away in some parts. Now, this section could easily be triple tracked. Triple tracking requires around 55 feet of right of way, but in order to run 12 plus trains an hour, this section must be quad tracked, which means there's going to have to be some property acquisition. And with real estate prices increasing in the area, this is why I believe that Caltrain should be getting on this sooner rather than later. Speaking of Caltrain, I'm in a one-sided battle right now of who has more subscribers on YouTube. I can smell victory. So make sure you hit that sub button. Okay, back to the video. Another upgrade to the Peninsula Quarter that would need to be built in order to run Dumbarton services is a flyover at Control Point Dumbarton. Without the flyover, eastbound Dumbarton trains will have to snake across all four or three tracks of the Peninsula Corridor. This movement would hold up all northbound Peninsula Corridor trains. Now, I actually prefer a fly under in this case because of the Woodside Road Bridge making some interesting height restraints. Again, the need for the flyover or fly under is assuming that the Dumbarton Rail Corridor will have high frequency service, which it should. Of course, the Y should be maintained for CP Dumbarton. This way, trains from San Jose to Fremont have the option to use the corridor. The next stop on the corridor is Facebook, I mean Menlo Park East Palo Alto Station. Around here, you have some densely packed single family homes, a library, oh, yeah, no, it's just Facebook. It's, it's really just Facebook. This is the reason why Facebook went as far as funding a study for the Dumbarton Rail Corridor. However, after 2020 happened, workers realized that it was pointless to show up to work five days out of the week, and the project was shelved. Okay, so now for some station details. The station is located just west or east of Willow Road, and my suggestion is double track two side platforms. Next on the corridor, we have the Dumbarton Bridge itself. There are two things that can happen with this section. For starters, the Dumbarton Bridge will have to be completely rebuilt and double tracked. This bridge is almost 115 years old, and while the bridge is a rare example of 19th century engineering, it has to be demolished in order to make way for a newer, more structurally sound bridge. This way we can increase both the speed and the number of trains on it. 
Now that we know that the bridge must be rebuilt, the question is, how do we rebuild it? Option number one, the bridge is elevated higher than the existing one to let more water traffic pass under it and remove the need for a movable bridge. This will mean high initial costs, but will possibly lower the operational and maintenance costs. Option number two, build another low movable bridge. This comes with the opposite effect, low initial costs, but possibly higher operational and maintenance costs. I generally like the idea of taller bridges. However, there's rarely any water traffic past the Dumbarton Bridge as it stands. This is why I believe that a mixture of both options should be used. The bridge should be tall enough to let some Coast Guard boats, fire boats, or police boats through. The Newark Slough Bridge, the next landmark on this corridor, won't need any of this. I think a normal steel girder bridge would do fine, as long as it's double tracked. I don't even think the bridge needs to be movable since there's not much going on here. Speaking of not much going on here, the next stop is Newark. The Newark station is located just east or west of Willow Street. And my suggestion is double track two side platforms. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, it's not deja vu. They really named the street Willow again. Is this? Anyways, the good thing about the newer station is that there are some newer residential developments in the neighborhood. Next, the connection of the Dumbarton Corridor to the Centerville Line should be grade separated. This means that a flyover or under will be needed. The next stop for Dumbarton services is Fremont. Fremont is double tracked with two side platforms. Fremont services Ace Rail and Capital Corridor services. This station, just like Redwood City, will be a big transfer hub. After that, a new connection from the Centerville Line to the Canyon subdivision needs to be built. This also means that the position Pacific Bus Museum might need to be relocated. The last stop for Dumbarton services is Union City. This station will connect directly with the BART Orange and Green Line. There's a lot of open space around this station, so I would like to see some upzoning. But um, yeah, that's the Dumbarton Rail Service. As I said in the last video, Caltrain is going to be the operator of this service. They've been stuck on the hook for this project for a minute, so it would be nice to see this corridor integrated with their growing network. With that being said, I'm hoping that this corridor isn't going to be a rail shuttle type of thing, and it actually is integrated with the network, which means trains from San Francisco to Union City. It would also be great to see Ace Rail operate on this corridor as well, especially with Ace Rail expanding to Merced and Sacramento and becoming more and more like an intercity rail passenger service rather than a commuter rail passenger service. Trains from San Francisco to Merced could be really useful. <coughs> <clears throat> also, when this corridor is built, it should be electrified. There's just no excuse for not doing so. I mean, it should at least be electrified to Newark. This way, it could hopefully pressure Ace Rail and the Capital Corridor to begin their electrification plans as well. But yeah, that's the end of this little mini series. I'd like to thank you guys for all the support that you showed on this series. Even though this series wasn't that popular in the algorithm, you guys really went out with the likes. I'd also like to thank my Patreon and YouTube members because you guys really kept me motivated through this. <laughs> With that being said, if I earned a like and subscription, I love you. And if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. Thank you.